Woo! Hi, my name is Amber. Today on the channel, we're sewing this clear backpack. This is a collab box between Fabric Therapy and k and I added a slip pocket here for a pencil pouch that I'll be adding for my son. But everything turned out so amazing. So if you want to learn how to sew this back, let's go! really nice um, metal bag tag plate. I'm not going to use this on my clear bag. I'm going to use it for the pouch that I will have that goes inside of the bag that I'll make another video for. Uh, you get three zipper pulls and this is all in matte black. Okay. Um, you have two strap adjusters. You have um, a D ring if you want to use it. I'm not going to use it. Um, k and A Custom Fabrics, I think is their name. They also have a clear um, backpack tutorial and she uses this in that. Her name's Faith, I think. But I'm not going to use that today because my son won't use that at all. We also have these two really, really nice... Um, they would take the place of like a D-ring. See that? It's so nice. So these will be attached at the bottom of our bag. Okay? I'll show you how. And then you also get two swivel hooks. Okay? So for today's purposes, I'm just going to use the swivel hooks. These bottom connectors that are characters. I don't even know what character that is. Some kind of angry block. And then I'm going to use these um, beefed up strap adjusters from Weft and Warpo. So that will be it for our hardware. I'm going to be using two zipper pulls. Additionally, you get um, zipper tape and you get extra. So this was what was left over after I cut it. I don't need this part. Just throw that scrap bin but um this zipper i cut to 21 inches long i have two straps 40 inches long um i'm making this for a child so i didn't want it too long and you do have extras that's left over so what i decided to do was i'm going to also do an eight inch loop so that my son can hang up his backpack at the end of the day because it drives me nuts when it's on the ground and my couch. <clears throat> so we're going to add this additional. And also I'm going to show you how to make the clear D rings, um, D ring connectors, but I'm not going to do that myself. I actually just use some of the extra webbing and these are three inches long, two of those. 
You're also gonna need some um, binding. It does come with this amazing binding tape. Stripes are my favorite, but since this is for my son, I'm gonna hoard this um, <clears throat> because I just love it and my son doesn't. So we're at an impasse, a good one at that. I'm going to be using this black binding from Mormino instead. Additionally, I cut one piece of um, clear and it's nine by 11. And I'm gonna do a slip pocket on the back of my bag, just like um, Faith did on hers. I really liked that. So my son can slip his like pencil pouch in there that I'll make on another video. And additionally, you can use waterproof canvas, but I'm going to be using um, jelly vinyl from Weft and Warp Co, just black, and this will be all of my um, trim on my edges. So, what you're going to cut out from the panel is going to be three of these D ring connectors if that's your jam. Okay? And I cut on the outside of the gray line. Or did I do the inside? No. I kind of did a combo of inside and outside. So this will be our back panel. And the bag does curve on one end on the bottom. So that's our back. We've got the bottom gusset. Two zipper panel gusset thingies. Okay. And we have the front panel. And pro tip, you can just use like some newsprint or packing paper and trace this and then you could make another one out of other fabric therapy TP like I'm going to do. Okay, so I think we're ready to start soon. Start soon. Start soon. Also, I forgot to add, <clears throat> I cut two half inch strips of um, jelly vinyl. You could also use waterproof canvas or some kind of binding. I'm going to use jelly vinyl just to cover up my zipper, where my zipper and my zipper panels attach, just to make it look sleek. Um, this is from Weft and Warp Co., but I know Zipper Valley sells it now. I think the Emporium, Brittany, she's selling it. Idle Bloom sells it. I can't think of anyone else, but I know there are many people who sell jelly now, but this was the OG jelly vinyl from Weft and Warp. So that will be our zipper. It's not like an overlay, but it kind of is an overlay. I'll show you. Okay. I've oiled my machine. I have a new needle. I have a full bobbin and we are sewing today on my Juki 1181N. So let's go. Okay, with our back slip pocket, you want the 11 inch side on top. That's where we're going to attach our overlay. So go ahead and get some double-sided tape and you're going to run a strip down each side. Now if your machine doesn't like double-sided tape, I'm sure you know that and I'm sure you also know how to adjust for that. So I'm going to put it in your hands. You know what to do, friend. Okay. No trick here is to get this, I guess I shouldn't have done the whole way. Let's trim it down. Keep that for another project. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to put this right about in the middle. 
been loving this double stick tape from Left and Rubco. I think I'm gonna move you so you can see me sew. Okay, there's one side attached. Peel up this other tape and then look, look through it and make sure they're lined up good, okay? So that they're not like one's too long or you don't wanna see your tape, you know? I just cut off all my nails, I have no nails. My job makes me happy. Well, I can't do my job without you. With me. Okay. So just kind of line it up. That makes sense. This would be a fantastic place for a wall. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I have this Hey Handsome from Mormino. And I'm just going to tuck it right in here. And then we're just folding this down. You can see through the final where the edges will meet. All right, now let's go ahead and sew along here, right on the edge, like an eighth inch seam allowance. I like to do a five stitch length. That's my personal top stitch preference. And you can back stitch or not. You should know your machine by now if you're watching me. You know what I'm gonna do to protect this woven label? I'm gonna put it on the inside like this. Yeah, 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 that'd be good. Cause I'm just thinking of my son and he is just like wild. He's eight, so you know. You can get a little flavor. Eight-year-old boys, they're wild. They're practically feral. That's a good boy though. Okay. See, then it's protected from the outside. Hey, -o. all right, let's go. <sighs> we ran out of bobbin. Son of a biscuit. Okay, that's fine. That's just. I knew it was coming. Why didn't I change it? Bad sewist. Where's my other bobbin? Okay. Now, how are we going to fix this one, huh? Oh, look at that. It's not trying to get crazy on me. Now, this is the back, so we're going to bring the thread to the back and tie it off. And then we're just going to start over in that little hole. Tie it off and send your ends. This is real life, people. strings. That's my dog. Okay. Let's start over. Go ahead and put our needle down in the 
first hole. We need to make it up. So we'll have to tie, pull to the or threads to the back and tie off where we started. You don't want to back stitch when you're fixing a little mess up. Okay, so I'm going to add one more line on top here just for funsies. It'll end up matching the zipper gusset, so... Now we're going to take this and put it onto our back. Now remember... The front of the bag has this curve here. So our back needs to be opposite with the curve down here. So everything matches up. So this will be the right side. Okay, and that's the side we're gonna put the slip pocket on. I mean, I guess it, you could have one on the inside too. But for these purposes, we want it to be. So just go ahead and line this up. It's pretty sticky. It should line up pretty well. And then we're just going to baste this pocket in place. It's kind of nice it smushes down, you know? Don't even really need the clips. Favorite rainbow hair clips. I use these for everything, even my So go ahead and base down all three sides. You're going to end up cutting this out, so don't sew down here and waste your thread. Um, you could just stop here and then jump back over here if you want. That's what I'm going to do. All right. I'm going to base at my top stitch length of five. Back stitch at the beginning. entire seam allowance on this bag is a quarter inch. So Now, clear backpack will get dirty as you're making it with fingerprints, etc. Just let it go, Elsa. We'll clean it at the end before pictures. My favorite. little overhang you have, just trim it. Make 
sure it's your pocket that's overhanging on your back. Okay. That's good. Now we have a usable slip pocket. even add a little snap here if you wanted. It is clear, so I wouldn't recommend a magnetic snap, probably just an actual snap. Okay. Now we're going to do our D ring connectors. So go thing with the D rings. In our case, these aren't D rings necessarily, but they are the their connectors. So we're going to attach it down here like we would on a D ring. For my bag, I am using Where are we? For my bag, I'm going to be using some of the extra seatbelt webbing I had. So just going to thread it through and then base down here. You can back stitch a few times. I'm gonna change my stitch length to four and a half. I like that too for my uh, assembly of things. Okay. Same with the other one. What is this little block, guys? Isn't it cute? Entire bag took me 12 minutes to cut out. Like nothing, honestly. I love these boxes. I hope Nancy does some more. I'm just gonna singe my thread ends. This lighter can be found in my Amazon link store if you're interested in something like this. Those are attached and good. I'm going to show you how to do the clear D-ring connectors, just in case. That is what you choose to do. So taking um, a connector, I would find the center. You can make a little snip since this will be uh, in your in your uh, seam allowance anyways just to find these centers here okay now you can take double stick tape and run it down each one of these sides and then fold it to the center or if you don't want your double stick tape to show just kind of hold it and clip it and it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to meet somewhere in the middle, okay? Let's see. Let's go ahead and sew down the side here. Quarter inch to an eighth inch seam allowance, depending. But I'm gonna use my top stitch length of five. And I have these really nice seam guides on my machine bed and it's almost like a rice paper slash washi tape. So it's kind of slippery, so it's good for vinyl. And then I'm not going to personally backstitch. I'm just holding it down with my fingers. Now fold this one, here's the back, okay? Fold this one in and then you can stitch right down there as well. Or if you don't wanna stitch in the middle, you can just stitch out here. I'll show you on the next one. But either way, 
it works. Whatever gets the job done. I really would just say ditch this and use the extra seatbelt leather you have. It makes your life easier. That's one way you could do it. You could add another stitch length out here. I'll show you how that looks. Or you can just do the outer one. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to zoom down this bottom here. So if you wanted to do that instead, you could, it would look like that. Okay. Only do the outside, do all four, only do the inside, either way it does the job. But, I recommend this. Okay. Next we're going to attach our... We're going to baste our D-rings onto the bottom. Stay about half an inch in from this bottom curve, okay? So from the actual edge, this is about two and a half. So it's a good way to measure it over on this side. Two and a half. Okay. Let's go ahead and base these down. And there they are. And all our glory. These are like sub these are substantial, like whoa. Okay, this is a good point. If you haven't already, you can just find all of your centers, okay, on your tops and bottoms of the main and back panels. You can go ahead and just cut a little mark out of there because this is all going to be sewn into the seam allowance anyways with our uh, basting or with our binding I mean I love fabric therapy TPU it literally is a dream a dream it was all a dream. Okay. Okay. That's done. Alright, 
now we're going to sew um, all of our corners on the front and back panel. You're basically just going to fold them right sides together, meaning our outside panel with our pocket, okay? Quarter inch seam allowance down. And I would use um, a smaller stitch length than a top stitch. Not too small though. I was working with my friend on Instagram and she was having the worst trouble sewing TPU and we figured out her, well, she figured it out eventually. Her stitch length was too small. I did not backstitch because I didn't. I guess you should. You gotta be careful with clear vinyl though. Alright, one corner. Now, what you could do is go ahead and singe these little guys. Or not backstitching. I should have at least backstitched on this corner that's folded. Okay, this one will be in binding, so that one's all right. But this back corner, for sure. And I'm almost thinking, no, don't make it more complicated. Okay, do the same thing here. So we're gonna do that on all of these. Now on this corner, I accidentally cut it. See, I trimmed it on accident too short. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Hopefully he doesn't have a hole in his backpack. He shouldn't with a quarter inch and a quarter inch. He should barely make it. Oh boy. Singe just on this fold thread because I want it to not stick out. Okay. Do this bottom corner too. Right sides together. There you go. three corners, if pushed out, are wonderful. Okay. Go ahead and repeat with the front panel.
All right, there you go. Looks just like a Game Boy. Okay, now we're gonna do our straps with our slide adjusters. Two straps. Two slide adjusters. Now with um, this leftover, we're basically gonna cut one inch strips. It's a one by one square of jelly. Vinyl is what I like to use because it's non-fray. And what we're gonna do is use this as our webbing ends. It also helps your slide adjuster to stay put a little better. So what we're gonna do is Take your end and you're going to want, not the end with the metal that's pokey, okay? See how it kind of dips down? This is our top. So go up through the bottom, loop around that sliding bar, okay? And you should have something like that. What I like to do is take my jelly vinyl and I am going to put it evenly as I can over this edge. It's a little big than, bigger than one inch, but that's okay. Okay, you kind of want to make it as even as possible right there. Now, before you stitch this down, it should stay pretty good because you used um, little stick tape. Go ahead and trim your sides even if you're off a little just to clean it up. Nobody's ever going to see this. It's only us who cares. But Now what you're going to do is fold this down. Okay, get as close as you can sew with your machine foot down here. Okay, I can't go too close because I have this edge. If I had my skinny foot, I could, but I don't have it on right now. So we're going to sew down right here back stitch and then I like to do right here as well back stitch and this will attach this to the sliding bar okay and you can back stitch as well I'm going to use a four and a half stitch length to attach this Singe those ends pretty soon here. Go ahead and repeat down this other edge. my little thread ends now. Another fun thing, you can always add um, little tags. Cloven labels are fun on straps. I like to do that. Okay. You could also add a rivet right here if you wanted to. We're not going to. Now, with our 
we gotta get our swivel clasp. Save these, you can recycle them, send them back to fabric therapy. Or Mormy knows she takes all of them too. They take all of them. Okay. You have to figure out which side you want to show to the world. This side or this side? I'm gonna make this side shown to the world. So, put your good side down. Your wrong side should be up. Take your swivel hook here and slide it on. Okay. This is what we should have. With your good side showing out. Go ahead and go up through the bottom, back through. Okay. And this is now the back of your strap that will be along the body. That's nice to be there. And this is where we're going to hook this onto the fancy connectors on the bottom. Okay. And then you'll still have an adjustable strap. This we're gonna sew into the seam allowance in a minute. So go ahead and repeat this entire process with the other strap. Okay, now take your back panel. We're gonna attach our strap. We're gonna base on our straps and our hanging loop. So we've already marked the center here. Go ahead and fold your loop so that it's like this. Okay, you don't want any twists. And we're gonna put it down. And the line where these two straps meet is where we'll line it right up with our center mark. You can clip it and then we're going to baste it into place. and take a strap and you're going to put it so that your slide adjuster is facing up okay and attach this right next to your middle loop if you're not going to do a middle hanging loop then just put each strap two inches from the center mark well one inch from the center mark sorry building this back. All right. Touch this other one on the other side of the loop.
Now our back panel is totally done. Time to move on to the zipper. So we're gonna wait to put on our zipper poles until the end. Start with one zipper panel. And this is that um, jelly vinyl. Go ahead and put a strip of double stick tape down the middle of this guy. Like, is there a right or wrong side to jelly? No. You're also going to want to run some double stick tape down the long edge of this zipper panel. Okay. With your zipper laying long, go ahead and take off your double stick tape one zipper panel and you're going to want to lay this about halfway between the edge of the zipper tape and the teeth and take your time because this will affect if your zipper looks crooked. okay i did cut my zipper tape a little long just to give myself some leave and I think down here we're going to make sure you don't have any wrinkles in your... Now, take one of your jelly... What are, you, what are we going to call this? Jelly covers? Your jelly zipper cover? <laughs> we're going to lay this a little bit further up on the zipper tape. Okay, so we're probably going to want about an eighth of an inch showing along the zipper teeth of the actual nylon tape, okay? Take your time because this won't be, it won't be noticeable if it's crooked. Okay, my jelly is not quite long enough. Okay, my jelly vinyl is not quite long enough. I thought I had made this 20 and a half. What's the difference? How long did I make this? Oh, less than a half. So what I'm going to do is center it here. Let's see. Maybe about a quarter inch. The seam allowance is a quarter inch, so hopefully that'll be enough leeway to cover it. Now you're going to top stitch on both edges of the jelly vinyl, okay? Pretend this goes all the way. Back to five and let's switch up towards zipper foot. So the jelly vinyl does kind of stretch a little bit, so work to my favor since I cut my little zipper jelly panels a little too short. So I always do next to the zipper teeth first when I'm sewing these down. Now we can do along this outer edge.
Now, I would singe my thread if I were you. Once everything's clear. Oh, look at that. You get to see. Refill my beauty. I do this to let out any pressure that's in there. Take my butane fuel and hold it upside down and you can watch the See the liquid fill up? And it lasts for quite a while. Perfect. Okay. Now I'll repeat this for the other side. Zipper slipper, that's what we're calling it. Oh, yeah. It's like a slip cover, but a slipper you put it on. Just cover your little toesies, huh? Yeah, zipper slipper. We should check our bobbin. Hey, hey, check your bobbin. We're winners today. We're checking our bobbins after this, okay? Okie dokie, we're done, hey. I was recording. Mm -hmm. A zipper slipper. Well over. Well over. Go over. Oh, she's looking good. She's looking real good. Now, what we're going to do is trim. Trim this stuff even on the end, okay? You're also going to want to do a little zoom and then you boom, okay? Because I said so. No, I don't know why. We just do that. This isn't even. I think the panels are off a little. I'm not sure what's going on there. We're just going to fake it till we make it, baby. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Take your bottom. The butt of the bag. The bag booty. <laughs> okay, we're gonna uh, line up these. Well, make sure these are the same width. If they're not, you know what to do. All right, they're not. See that? See? Too much. Go trim. Go trim it. Make it the same as the bottom, the bag booty, okay? The gusset. I'm trying to think of a new name because Lauren doesn't like gusset. Okay, now we're gonna put on our zipper poles, okay? Put the zipper pulls on the back front. You're gonna forget, you'll be real mad because this clear stuff, it ain't easy. I'm gonna show you how I do this. Pull it apart. Front of zipper. 
straight up. And then slowly kind of straighten out the zipper, okay? Then see that didn't need to work. That did not work. So we know we need to rotate this zipper head a little straighter. Oh, see how there's a bump? Even. That's when you know. That's when you know. Flip around. Repeat. these to the middle. Now, if you were doing that side D-ring at the base of your zipper, now would be the time to baste it on here if you're doing all that. All right, line up these and sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Use a smaller stitch length because we're doing structure changes right now. down and attach it on the other end. Now you're going to open your seams, but leave your seams facing towards the bottom of the bag, okay? Not up. You don't want to, you don't want to fold it like that. That's a nightmare. Just do it like that, okay? And then top stitch. Make sure you're not going to get any of your other gusset. Pinch these little thread ends because I have OCD. Maybe I don't. I don't know what I have. I'm just me. All right, repeat on the other side. Now, see, my jelly vinyl didn't go all the way, but yours should. 20 and a half. I did my 20. I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking clearly.
find your centers. Front and back on the top and bottom. And you can snip a little tiny hoop. You can do that. It's gonna be in our binding gusset or our binding seam anyways. Okay, now do the bottom here. We're going to attach the back panel to this gusset, okay? So I'm gonna push my corners back out. And I gotta say, I'm kind of glad I have like a piece. This isn't TPU, it's a little thicker. I think it was from my local quilt shop but I'm glad it was a little thicker because these are kind of heavy so I think it'll help to stabilize that bottom a little bit okay so we have our center marks up here and down um, down here and up there so you're gonna take the top of your zipper gusset with your poles out and you're gonna flip that to be right side down so we're essentially doing right sides together and line up your little center mark with where that center top thing is and just clip it. And it does help because it's a little sticky. And then put all these out. And then go ahead and line up your bottom center mark. We're going to be sewing with the gusset out, so you might want to turn these the other way if you're like me. And I'll show you why. There's a way I like to do gussets here with binding. If you see my Mav Pack video, you know what I mean. Go ahead and fold this corner down okay so that when you're rounding that corner it will be sewn down okay and we're just going to go around try not to stretch your tpu too much if you can avoid it it should go around that corner pretty nice though And for consistency's sake, I'm going to just keep these folded all the same way towards each other.
looks like the gusset is not fitting totally right here. So I'm just trying to space it out a little bit and we'll see if it ends up being an issue at the very end. I'll leave a message for you if it is so you know to cut yours down a little. But TPU does stretch a little, so I don't know, maybe it's just me. Okay, I can already see an issue. Um, yeah, I'm not in the center because look at those gussets. So, we're just gonna zhuzh it around till it fits. This gusset is just way too big. We're going to cut it to make it fit. There we go, that matches better. I think the bottom is too big though. I wonder if she accounted for one side not being square. And this, you just really gotta finagle it until you have it right because it will affect the shape of your bag. Okay, I'm interested to see what's happening down here. I'm just gonna uncook a lot of that. I'm guaranteeing you it's because they didn't account for there not being a pocket for a fold. Never fear. You're so besties here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, totally. I'll get stuck in the center. But don't mind me. Okay, that fits better. Maybe I just didn't mark the center appropriately. Who knows? Okay. I'm going to switch 
switch my camera angle so that you can see um, from this side of my machine because this is how I do honestly all my gussets. So I'm going to sew with the back panel facing my machine. Okay. I think that will be the For this part to be uber successful, I recommend a hemostat. Okay. Oh, that looks great. All right, let's switch out. Okay, check your bobbin. My bobbin's good. This might be a one bobbin bag. Ain't that Okay, we're going to sew around with our back panel facing our machine. Sew at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Don't go all the way to a quarter because we will be doing that with our binding. This will be hidden inside of our binding seam, so don't worry about this. And I would use four and a half stitch length. And so you're just gonna zip around. You're basically just basting this on so that when you get to the binding part, everything won't slip on you and you can just concentrate on making your binding super amazing and wonderful you can put your hand on the inside here make sure you don't get any ripples he missed that tool also i put the clips on the wrong way of course okay. he missed that tool line up those edges oh see look she went off course here on me go back to where you went off course this is why we based first. Use your hemostats to clip it together. Okay. Put your hand on the inside to make, well, it would technically be the outside, but you know what I mean. So put your needle down. Okay, remove this clip, and we're just going to. Hold these two together with the hemostat while we zip around this rounded edge. And don't worry, this is just a base. The next go around with the binding, we're gonna have to be accurate, boo. If you're not first, you're last. No, that's a horrible motto, don't go back.
hold your strap straight. It's kind of hard to swing this back up if you can. All right, the gusset fit perfect. You just gotta finagle it back at the beginning. Okay, grab your binding now. your binding you're going to start wherever you want really I'm gonna start here and you're going to since this is um, Lauren's it doesn't fray at all you can literally just pull it over and just look through since it's a see-through panel you can just look through and kind of hold it I'm not gonna really even clip it. I'm just gonna go back around and this time I'm gonna go with a quarter inch seam allowance with my top stitch length, okay? So you can add double stick tape if you wanna be super precise, but honestly you probably should, but this is meant to be fast and easy. All right, quarter inch. Let's go. And I will say, this stitch will change the shape of your bag. So make sure it's spot on. Make sure you do not have any folds or tucks. All right, we're coming up on the end. Cut it and fold it. Can you see me? Yes, you can. Let me go a couple more stitcherudies here. Okay, go ahead and get your scissors. I'm gonna cut it a little bit past where I started and I'm gonna fold it in. Go ahead and fold this little guy under. Tuck him in. Tuck him into bed. Good night, little guy. Fold it right over that edge. Perfect. All right, go. Ooh, it's thick. It's thick right there with that jelly. Be careful. That's why I love my little engine that could. Okay, perfect. I mean, I don't want to say this is the best binding I've ever done, but it is.
probably the best binding I've ever done. Okay, so now we're gonna take our front panel and repeat. So I'm not going to add that on this video, but you're literally doing the same thing you did on the back with the front. So guss it up, front panel right side down, find your centers, attach one eighth of an inch around, then put your binding and do the quarter. Remember, the binding is the one that matters, okay? So I'll see you on the other side. You ready? Oh my God, it's so easy to turn. <laughs> uh, nobody makes TPU quite like Nancy Boo. Super cute. I'm glad we added this. See, 40 inch straps work on an adult too. Could be. Could be even less, honestly. Save yourself some webbing. Oh, yeah. So I have one glove like Michael Jackson. Meow. Great, so. Mwah.